The sun is shining. The sea is calm. Oh, sorry, sorry. Wrist break. And this is my first time kayaking. Ooh, sorry. I mean, you could probably tell, right? No, this is tougher than it looks. It does require skill, skill that I do not have. A lot of strength, which I wish I had more of, but you do feel the natural environment around you. It's nice. We're here because Hong Kong is a kayaker's dream. Hundreds of islands, so many places to explore, and so many places to get lost. I've tripped in the way, I'm sorry. So I'm not alone here, obviously. There's my crew. But as nice as it is out here, I can still feel how the ocean can be a big, lonely place, especially if you're far out to sea in need of rescue. Sam Mayle has been sailing since he was 10 years old. As he got bigger, so did the boats and the level of risk. When I lived and worked offshore, I was unfortunately involved in a number of uh, accidents. Unfortunately, some of them were, were fatal. We got the call on Channel 16, man overboard, man overboard. Your adrenaline just goes through the roof and it's right, how quickly can we get there and rescue that guy? We got in the boats, we went as fast as we could to the guy in the water. Trying to find someone in the water is exceedingly difficult. After an hour of searching, we found him um, face down in the water. The key theme was time and risk. The quicker you could get something in the water to go and rescue people, um, the better the chances of recovering them alive. And the second was the risk. Do we want to put three of our guys in harm's way to go and save one person that's gone overboard? Six years ago, then aged just 22, Mayo began dreaming up what would become a trio of life-saving technologies. The first, finding people stranded at sea. The challenges with the human eye is really associated around fatigue. There's inconsistency between my eyes at the beginning of a search and my eyes half an hour in. So Mayo's team engineered an AI software program that can be applied to existing camera feeds like drones or CCTV. And it applies AI in a novel way over the top of that image to autonomously detect casualties and target objects. We're working at about a 90% accuracy at the moment, and the more the system is, is used, the better it becomes. The second life-saving technology is designed to get people out of the water fast. So cold water shock sets in within three minutes. You need to get the guys out of the water very, very quickly. When you work in an offshore wind farm, you could be three, four, five hours from a lifeboat and over two hours from a helicopter. That's where the SWIFT system comes in, a conveyor belt that Mail says can get people out of the water in around 30 seconds. Former Army engineering officer Laura Tognarelli is in charge of rolling out this technology. The SWIFT um, employs a basic conveyor technology that most of us have seen in other areas that has been adapted to the maritime environment. It allows us to use it on a range of platforms um, from larger crew transfer vessels, so the boats that take you out as an offshore worker, to being in a position to use it on potentially cruise liners or bigger commercial ships. Man overboard, port side! It takes away the stigma of needing to have a certain level of strength or endurance to work offshore, and it allows that rescue to be open for everybody. And I think the key thing for me with it is it's technology isn't replacing people. It's very much a tool to enhance people. And the third life-saving technology, keeping rescuers safe. Everyone thinks that you put your hero capes on and off you go and save the guys, but the reality is, is quite different. 
in a lot of cases um, worldwide, the decision is made not to launch the rescue assets because of the risk to the rescuer. This is an early prototype for The Guardian, a remotely operated unmanned rescue vessel with a swift conveyor attached. So imagine seeing your computer game system and you're controlling the boat from there. That coupled with the cameras around the vessel and the option for mics allow it to be a two-way scenario to allow you to talk to those who are being rescued but also get that full environmental sense of the situation. This reduces the need for crew to be put at risk to be launched. It allows the captains to go, you know what, I'm going to launch the Guardian anyway, although I won't put more of my crew's lives at risk to rescue that life. Mail's Edinburgh-based company, Zellum, is working with the U.S. Coast Guard and a number of offshore energy companies to crack the code of saving lives with more speed and less risk. A lot of the technologies employed offshore now are the same technologies that have been there for the last 40, 50 years. We're now in a position where technology is changing, um, there's new technologies on the market, we're integrating that and we believe we can set a new benchmark in safety.